Namespaces, what are they? From the beginning, APL had this kind of notion in the form of uh, the workspace. The workspace contains everything needed to run an application. It contains functions, variables, and even system variables. And it can be initialized. In short, it can be viewed as an object. It can serve as a base and be copied into another workspace. For example, the workspace stat package has been brought in and its elements can be edited. One of the problems with workspaces is, as can be seen here, name clashing. The workspace already had a count object, which clashed with the one in the other workspace that was copied in. There's another problem with copying workspaces. You may have to clean up when you're finished, and you have to find out all the names that were brought in in the first place. You cannot take an entire workspace and store it as a unit in a component file. You can only have one item per component in a component file, either variable or a function. Tricks can be used. For example, looking at this stat package, we can see that function count is used in function average, which is itself used in standard deviation. One trick we can use is to prefix each one of these items with a constant name. For example, we've prefixed all the names with stat underscore. One of the problems with that, of course, is that we have to change all the functions. Now, stat average must include stat count and not count anymore. There are drawbacks to this technique. In the 70s, a company came up with a solution to this problem in the form of a package which would group items, functions, and variables, and system variables together. They would act as a static unit. They could be stored on file. They could be copied, like workspaces, into existing code and their content dispersed in it. The problem, of course, is that the existing items may still clash with the ones in the workspace. In the 80s, another company came up with the concept of namespace, probably from another language, like Java. Each namespace is similar to a workspace. It contains functions, variables, including some system variables. The way you create a new namespace is using the command ns new space. And to move into it, use the command change space. Here, there are no functions, no variables, but I can copy an existing workspace into it. You can call the functions directly within the namespace, or if you're outside of the namespace, switching back to the main namespace, we can call directly the functions by prefixing with the namespace name. The namespace, just like a workspace, contains functions, variables, system variables. It can contain, in fact, an entire application. It acts as a unit. It can be put as a single item on a file. It is dynamic. You can move into it and execute the code. There is no need to disperse the contents. So name clashing is minimized. In fact, it is restricted to the namespace name itself. Like a workspace, if you need to tweak one, you need to take a copy and modify it. Once you've loaded the workspace, you can modify anything in it and save the workspace back with a new name. Cloning a namespace is similar. Let's find out if there's any namespaces in this workspace. Let's use the command objects to find out if there's any namespace in there. The command objects tells us all the namespaces in the workspace. To create a new namespace, we generate one from the representation of another. Here, quite a while, we'll create an object representation of my app, which will be used as an argument to quite an S, which will create a new space from it. New app will be completely independent from my app. We can now add anything we want to. New app is a cloned copy which has been modified. We can reuse the code that existed in the namespace to create a new namespace, just like we can create a new workspace from an existing one. This is reusability. This is one of the key concepts of object-oriented programming. From a template, you can create many new versions. Classes are very much like namespaces. From a class, you can create a new version, possibly modifying it. So from one class, you can create many possible different versions. .NET is based on namespaces and supports many OO concepts. Dialog APL also is based on namespaces and supports many OO concepts. They go well hand in hand together. If we look at a flat APL workspace, we see that it looks pretty much like this. A flat workspace contains everything. 
There's no distinction, no separation. In contrast, a workspace with namespaces is divided into sections. You can have objects at every level. A namespace can contain functions, variables, and even other namespaces, as we can see in this example here. To find out what's in a namespace, all you have to do is ask a quaternal what's in the namespace. Namespaces are quite useful. They allow you to separate your code into compartments and make it cleaner. You should use them.